for those, Melissa Armo, she has a really, really good, interesting gap strategy that she likes to talk about. And stay tuned. She's going to tell you about it right now. Melissa, how are you doing? Great. Can you hear me? Yeah, mm -hmm. there you are. Perfect. Let me go ahead and make the presenter you. We are running about eight to 10 minutes late right now. So I don't want you to be too worried about time. It's a suggestion today. So <laughs> your turn. Jeff, but we, have to get you a, we have to get you a step and repeat type background that says Metastock. Because <laughs> I'm looking at your background and it's just a black screen. We have to get you some fancy charts from Metastock and put them in the back. Are you are you throwing shade at my background? No. no <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody does these big things now on TV where they have their whole, they have their company logo in the background. It's yeah. like on a, yeah. you know, it's projected somehow. We got to get you these because you're doing these webinars every day. Every day you're doing them. I'm going to paint one. <laughs> there we it's go. It's going to look awesome. That would be really okay. unique. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can hear you really well. Melissa, you're coming in great. Uh Actually, Jeff, the Kelly from the control room, actually, Melissa's coming in a little bit soft. I was wondering if there's any way to have her get closer to her microphone or anything. Let me try. Is that any better? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Can you hear me now? It, it's still just a little soft, but we can hear you clearly now. I have the microphone right, right next to my keyboard. Can you hear me better? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're good now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. Though. No, I want people to be able to hear me. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks for having me here at Metastock. It's nice to be here today, and, and it's a beautiful, beautiful spring day here in Manhattan. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo. I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I started trading in 2008. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to figure this out super duper quick. And then all of a sudden, you know, Six months go by, a year goes by, and it took me three years to develop my system. And one of the most important thing about charts, like Jeff was talking about, is it helps you make trading decisions. So I would never ever trade if I didn't have charts. I basically would be like trading blind. And you know, a lot of people out there, they wanna look at fundamentals, they wanna look at economic data, and that's great if those things help you combined with the charts to make good trading decisions. But in this type of environment, right now, 2023, and even in 2021 and 2022, when you're looking at some of the economic data, you know, and you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, if you're making decisions based on that, again, looking at the fundamentals and not really looking at what's happening in the price action, you may lose money in trades because ultimately things don't always add up. Occasionally the fundamentals will add up with the charts and make sense, but not all the time. So sometimes I will short a stock and it may have a great earnings report. Sometimes something will have a bad earnings report and I will actually go long the stock. So they don't always coincide. So I think charts are essential in order to be able to make trading decisions and we're going to talk about charts today, but mostly we're going to talk about shorting. And we're going to talk about shorting stocks for winning trades. And today's, we actually, this week has been a great week to short. Uh, this morning we did Disney. I didn't take a look at where it was right now um, since I jumped on here, but we did a fast trade in that today. Disney had earnings last night. I did not have time to put that chart in here, but you can take a look at it yourself. It fell. Okay, so we shorted Disney this morning. We get, got in and out very, very quickly. And I think in this type of environment, in this type of market, which has been back and forth since the beginning of 2023, the best thing that you can do if you want to be profitable is to get in and out quick. And again, I'm talking about day trades or even if you want to do options. I do weekly options and I do puts for shorts. Okay, put is a short in an options trade, but I'm doing the weeklies. Because again, I want to get in and out very, very fast. Fast meaning an option one to two days, maybe three, but that's even a long time. If I'm in something three days, it probably didn't go right the first day. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube as well, and Skype. I appear on TV and I try to put when I'm gonna be on TV on my Twitter or my Facebook. 
I appear on Fox News, CBS News, News Nation, which is a new channel that's been taking off as well, and Shutter. And so I talk about the economy, I talk about the stock market, but it's been interesting times right now with the Fed raising interest rates as, as much as they possibly can, actually, in the last nine months. And a lot of people are under the impression that the Fed is going to back off rates uh, for the remainder of 2023. I happen to think that they are not going to do that. Um, and if we have time, we will discuss why. But, you know, last year, particularly the majority of the year last year in 2022, we really shorted and had so many big shorts. You could have held shorts. You could have held them for longer. But you couldn't have shorted everything last year. Last year, you could have said it was a bearish year for the market. I don't think it was a bearish year for the market, but there was more shorts that I did in the QQQs and the SPY, which are the ETFs for the overall market, than I did probably in any other year that I ever traded. I'm talking about the market specifically, okay, not just individual stocks. It was a great year to short, okay? But you can make money shorting in any market environment, bullish, bearish, or even sideways, if you look for individual stocks, like I just talked about Disney. Another big one we did this week is PayPal. That was really the gap of the week, and we're going to talk about that one too. But you have to know what to short, when to short, and obviously you have to be selective. I put in here the stats for last year for our year-to-date results in the live trading room. I also have 2023 year-to-date as well, but this is an average risk of about $2,800 per trade. These are trades on margin for the whole year, and most of them are shorts because I mostly do short. Results for the year were $651,079, and again, this is all of 2022. Now, I did take some time off last year because I moved. Um, I took about two weeks off, but overall, it was a great year. So far this year for 2023, again, we've been doing sometimes the market short, but we've also been doing selective stocks, which we're going to talk about some of those specifically today. And then I also have a Gap Options newsletter, which is separate from my day trades, which I risk more. So my average risk for my options trades is about $8,000 a trade. Now that's a lot of money. You could risk $1,000 a trade, but this is a mix of calls and puts. Even though I do prefer to do puts, we did a mix of calls and puts last year, but we did the market a lot. And we did the market a lot to the downside, okay? So there was a very active year last year for the options newsletter because there were so many opportunities to trade momentum, which we're going to talk about today. Again, we are going to focus today on shorting, but we made over $3 million last year doing options with an average risk of 8000 Again, you can risk more, you can risk less. You can take one contract and do an option. One of the reasons why people like op options specifically is because you don't need a margin account to trade options. I like options because I can hold overnight in an option. And I did that with the PayPal and I got a bigger move holding the PayPal, which was a put. Um, again, we will talk about that trade in here today, but I got a bigger move by holding it and I don't wanna hold margin trades overnight. So this doesn't have actually the last three weeks in here. I have only until uh, April, in the middle of April. But I do have the trades we did for May in here. But we were up to April 14th, 185,435 this year for the 2023. So far this year has been on track pretty good. We'll see how we go this month. So far it's been good. We've had a lot of volatility in the market. I see that we're rallying here this afternoon. We did drop off yesterday at one point and the day before. So again, if you're looking to trade the QQQs of the SPY every day, you're probably really getting chopped up. While I do do the market ETF some days, I do not focus necessarily every single solitary day on the market. I like to do individual stocks, individual picks, and what I focus on is gaps, and we're going to talk about what a gap is in a minute. But, and I'm someone saying something about a big city. I can't see that whole comment. I have to, I have to scroll up. If you do have questions, you can um, you can take a look. My, where is my background? That's, that's New York. That's New York, actually. That's not the background I'm looking at right now. My, I'm looking at Central Park. So that's, that's a Midtown background. I did move. I stayed in New York and I moved from Midtown to, um, to Central Park. So I'm very, very happy here. It's like living in a completely different city, actually. <laughs> I can't believe how long I've lived in New York and I, and I never enjoyed Central Park, but it is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And if you've never been to New York, I'll just say this really quickly. You must go to Central Park. Um, you know, it's beautiful right now in the spring. It's going to be beautiful in the summer. I can't wait to the fall. We didn't have much snow this year. I only saw one day of coating of snow in, in the winter because we had a very light winter this year in New York. But Central Park is 
absolutely spectacular and I'm just amazed actually that how beautiful it is it's like 843 acres and it really is an, o an oasis in the heart of, uh, of New York City but anyways getting back to what I was saying here nothing in life that is great comes without taking chances or risk so you know for a lot of people once 2020 hit with COVID a lot of people then started to reevaluate their life their career their life path the relationships you know a lot of people had babies after COVID and then a lot of people got divorced after COVID so you know during the lockdowns three plus years ago now here we are May of 2023 people started evaluating their life and what they want out of life you know there's there's always time for you no matter how old or young you are to change what you were doing to change your circumstances to better your life and actually to start a new career and do something different and so I, I, I was at that point in my life when I was doing mortgages because it became very difficult in 2007 and 2008 because it was hard to get loans approved. I would never want to be doing mortgages right now. Again, getting back to where we are right now with interest rates, interest rates are very high. So if you go back, and you know this if you've been looking to buy a home, you know, you, interest rates 12 months ago, 18 months ago, were half what they are, less than, more than half of what they are currently so again I would never want to be doing mortgages right now if I hadn't made the career shift and the career move that I had you know 15 years ago I'd probably be looking to do it now so a lot of times you know if you're one of those people that you're not satisfied in your career you know that even just listening to me today and it's up to you to make decisions about your life take it upon yourself to make those decisions and ultimately, it does very often involve risk because you don't know what the future holds. You don't know what a new job is going to be like. You don't even know when you take a trade if you're going to win or lose, okay? When I take a trade, I try to evaluate what I'm doing based on a rating system that I try to put the odds in my favor per using the rating system that I created, which I'm going to talk about today. But if I wouldn't do that, it would be a 50-50 crapshoot. And unfortunately, that's how many, many, many traders trade. There's a difference between risk for risk's sake and calculated risk. And a lot of people just, again, they're looking at it, well, it could go up, it could go down. It could go up, it could go down. Listen, that's not good enough. 50-50 odds really isn't good enough to make money in any market, let alone this market right now. And what do, I, what do I mean about this market? This market, since the beginning of January 2023, has been sideways. While the range has tightened and widened and tightened and widened, even today, while we're rallying, we're still within a range, okay? So whether we break up and out of the range or break lower um, into the range or stay range bound between now and the end of 2023 remains to be seen. But you have to be very, very picky when you're taking trades and you're risking money and 50-50 odds aren't good enough. Now, I was talking about this in a webinars that I've done ever since this, this whole bank collapse started, which has been going on now for, I guess, two months two months really what's one important takeaway from the recent bank collapses the one of the takeaways is that things ha can happen that are out of your control and that you have to be prepared for that okay so what can you do and again the great thing about trading once you learn how to trade once you learn how to make money in the market is that no one ever can ever take that information away from you once you get good at it and once you know how to do it no one will ever take that information away from you or the skill set once you learn the skill set of how to make money in the market. So I have a skill set and I use that skill set every day. I'll always have it forever, forever and ever and ever. And no one can ever take that away from me. So the, the frustration that people have when they see banks go under and of course people lost their jobs or they see things happen like interest rates going up and then it affects things they want to buy or, or when they want to borrow like whether it's a car loan, whether it's a mortgage, they feel like things are out of their control. While there may be things that are out of your control that you cannot control, okay, the outer circumstances of life, you can control the things within your own world. The choices you make, the decisions you make, what you want to do for a living, and also where you want to invest your money, where you want to risk your money, whether or not you want to trade for a living, where you have your money deposited, and all of these things. 
So you can't feel like you're a victim to all these circumstances that happen outside of yourself because then you're going to move forward in life feeling like a constant victim. And that mentality is far too prevalent right now in society today. And you can't really move forward and become and evolve and become the wonderful, fabulous person that you want to be if you feel like you're a victim. Sometimes it's harder than you think to make a career change or even to learn how to trade. Sometimes it costs money. It very often does. Like I just moved, like I told you, it costs a lot of money to move. In fact, I never, I didn't really sit down and figure out how much I've spent since I moved. I'll probably sit down and do that over the summer once I'm completely finally done and packed. It was, it, was it worth all the hard work for me to move? Yes. Whatever I spent, whatever amount of time it is, it was because my life is so much better now just moving you know up in a different environment in a different neighborhood so risk spending money time investment working hard all these things pay off for you in the long run if you're willing to commit yourself to do it and what i've found again in the 11 years that i've had the stock switch that i've been teaching people how to trade my method is a lot of people that trade fail because they lack commitment and they lack commitment simply because they always want the quick buck they always want the quick buck. They want to make all the money they ever lost trading right now, right now, right now, this week, this day. That's what they want. They have no long range plan really to actually learn how to trade, get good at it and proceed and use something that they can do for the rest of their life in the market. So I think, you know, it's the commitment that's important. It's the long range plan that you got to have. And then you have to have the type of mentality where you are in charge of your own life. You are not a victim. You can change your own circumstances. And not only that, you can become wealthy if you really want to put your mind to it. It may not happen as fast as you want it to, but it can happen. And as long as you know that, and as long as you understand that, every single day will be a joy to get up, knowing that you're one step closer to, your, to fulfilling your actual dreams. If your dreams are actually to become a professional or successful trader if you're doing it part-time. So as I was saying again, can you do well during these times? Absolutely you can, because there's volatility. We've seen that just in the last couple of hours. We've seen volatility. Market was down, then it was up. We've seen that. You can capitalize on the volatility in the market if you know how to trade it. Anyways, a lot of people work hard and they just never get anywhere where they want in life, okay? And a lot of people think they're helping themselves, but they're really wasting time. The fact is, don't waste your time. You've got to be smart about it. If someone told you you could get to the top of the ladder, the top of the mountain, super duper quick, even if it would cost you a lot of hard work and money, wouldn't you rather do that and save time than, than have it take you years and years and years and years and years? So, you know, I think, again, a lot of people want to put off till tomorrow what they can do today and if you're not happy with what you're doing with your trading or you don't have a trading strategy or you're not happy with what you're doing for a living and you want to change careers don't waste time you know think about the future now and move forward anyways any questions or comments you can pop it in the room i'm just looking over here to the side Anyways, one individual can trade the market successfully as a career if you have a dependable method, okay? So I just follow one system, which is gaps, which I will explain to you in a minute. And again, I'm even following one directional bias most of the time. I'd say a short, more than 90% of my trades are shorts. And again, they could be puts and options or just day trade shorts. But the central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that's based on accurately reading price action. And I use technical advanced analysis. So what do you need? You need charts to do that because what is technical analysis? Technical analysis is looking at past price data in order to predict future price data, okay? So it is an important time to set goals for yourself again in two weeks from now. It's Memorial Day. So it's the start of the summer. Everybody is off. You can take a long weekend and set your goals for where you want to be between now and 1231. Between now and the end of 2023, put a plan in place. How much money do you want to make trading? How much money do you want to make in the market? How much money do you want to make a week? All right. And think about what I said today about this concept of empowering yourself to trade the market successfully and not being a victim to other things that, that, are, that are happening. And, and I say this, not, not to be negative, I say this to be realistic, that we could go into a recession, we're probably at the start of a recession right now, but we could go into a full-blown recession within the latter part of 2023. 
uh, despite what the Fed said the last conference, I believe that we absolutely could. And if they keep raising interest rates, that becomes more and more likely. It doesn't mean that times have to be bad for you. Again, what am I focusing on? I'm focusing on shorting, okay? So we shorted PayPal, fell off a cliff. You can take advantage of these downside moves in stocks and downward moves in the market by learning how to short. So you can actually make money on the shorting side of things. Even if we say, for example, crash you know, in the market, you may not like that for your IRA or your retirement account, but you can chunk it out as a trader, as an active trader by taking advantage of the downside moves. And again, one nice thing about day trading is you can work from home. I'm working from home now. Jeff's probably working from home. It's convenient if you can work from home right now. People are doing that more and more ever since COVID, and people are now just doing it even though they have the option to go back to work. So you can trade and actually do another job at the same time if you want from home. And then the nice thing about trading is you can make your own hours. And, and, and again, day trading for me, I trade in the morning. I'm in and out and done quick. We were in and out at Disney this morning in a couple of minutes. But it is a full-time pay with part-time hours, which is really, really nice. And again, it, trading has a limited income potential because the only thing that prevents you from making you know, $3 million a year versus $1 million a year or $100,000 a year is your risk per trade. You obviously have to know how to train. You obviously have to have a system that has more winners and losers. But once you know what to do and you apply the system, then, of course, you can risk more. And therefore, then guess what? You will make more. Now, let's talk a little bit about charts. So do you know the right way to read a chart? If you do not, you should not be trading at all. Charts are vital. Charts are important. When we're done here, Jeff can talk about that um, a little bit when, when we're done. You, you, you know, you're, you're trading blind if you don't have charts, basically. You don't even know what the price of something is. I mean, you could go into Google and you could look it up and you could say, boom, 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 what's the price of the QQQs right now? But, you know, you can't make any decisions to predict where somebody's going to go just seeing that. You need the past price data to be able to predict the future price data. And it's very, very important. And again, if you don't have that information, you're basically trading blind. How can you make decisions? Okay. So for me, it is all about institutional money. I'm looking at the big footprints of institutional money in the market. I'm looking at what big hedge funds, professional traders, even banks that invest money in the market are doing. What are they doing? Are they buying a stock? Are they selling a stock? Are they shorting a stock? Again, we're going to look at PayPal. What happened to PayPal? Here's the chart of PayPal. This is a daily chart. Okay. PayPal fell off a cliff. Okay, now the reason, you could say, what is the reason? The reason was it had earnings. But again, what those earnings said, I did not read up about and nor do I care. But PayPal the night before here, see where this candlestick is right in here, closed here like around 75 and change, boom, opened in the morning here under $70 and fell and tanked. Okay, so again, this red bar here depicts what? Selling and you had shorts. Okay, so we shorted this. I called a put in this, and we also did a day trade in this here, and then we also did one here. So we actually did PayPal two days in a row. So from the previous day, okay, before the stock even fell at, before the earnings, the stock was around 75, and again, within one, two, three days, it was all the way down at 62 and change. So talking about institutional money, how would you make money in PayPal? You would have had to been shorting PayPal in order to make money. Now, people always say, well, how do you trade options? I do not do complicated option strategies. I'm trading options using the exact same strategy that I use to make my day trade picks or any pick of anything I do. It's based on the gap and it's based on momentum. PayPal is a great example of this because it had huge momentum, huge momentum on the day, huge momentum the day after, okay? So I'm buying calls and selling them, or I'm buying puts in the case of PayPal and selling them for options. So I'm trading momentum, okay? I'm not trading for a couple of pennies when I do options. I'm trading for dollars, and the momentum should come in fairly quickly. Same thing with my day trades. I'm trading momentum for the day trades. I'm in and out quickly. I'm in and out fast, as fast as I can. 
And again, if I get in and out fast in the morning, in the first half an hour of the day, then I don't have to worry about a Fed meeting or Fed minutes or anything else like that that happens. Now, how did I know PayPal was going to go? How, how did I predict that? Again, I looked at the chart and I have a system I developed using a rating system, which looks at the gap. And then I determine how many points it has to determine if it's going to continue in the direction of the gap. That is a system I teach in my monthly class. Now let's go over what a gap is. This is a gap in PayPal. So PayPal, first of all, a gap is a difference between the close and the open. So this U.S. stock market closes every day at, at 4 o'clock and opens every day the next day at 9.30 a.m. So this PayPal here was a gap down, okay? So there are gap downs, there are gap ups. What is a gap up? Again, the day before in here, PayPal closed at one price and opened at a higher price. So this was a gap up. So this was a bullish gap. This was a bearish gap, okay? Actually, the day after the PayPal earnings, it had a bullish gap, but it failed and it fell off a cliff. That was day two. What is today? The 11th. That was the 10th. So again, I look at the gap. Where do you see the gap? You see the gap when it's happening. It could happen at night. It could happen in the morning. I'm not predicting the gap. In other words, I didn't short PayPal here or here or here or here. I didn't know what this was going to gap here. I did not know that at all. So I wait. And then when I see it, I use a system that I developed over three years plus where I will rate the gap in the daily chart and determine if it's going to keep going down which is exactly what PayPal did, or if it's gonna go up. And a lot of people that trade gaps want to do something called a gap fill. Now, I personally do not trade gap fills. Some people do. I find that they do not have a consistent way to make money to work, okay? So I don't do gap fills. While sometimes you might be able to make money doing a gap fill, it's not something that I've found is consistent. So again, getting back to the odds, high odds, how do you make money in the market if you need high odds? You need to have things working in your favor. You need to have more wins and losses. So in the case of PayPal here, the odds were that it was going to sell off, and that is exactly what it did. Now, here was the play of the day that we did, which was also the gap of the week, which is in PayPal. This was not the first day, actually. This was the second day. The second day, we had such a big trade because I had such a tight entry. So entry was 65.05. And again, this is a trade on margin. You would need a margin account to do this trade. 6,000 shares, the risk was 3,000, exit was 63.40. It even kept going after that. I'll go back and show you the chart. This was yesterday, May 10th. Profit was $9,900. Now, this is actually a very reasonably priced stock, I think, as far as the price point at $65 a share. Again, if you have a retail account, you understand margin. If you don't, you can always email me afterwards or ask me questions now about what is a margin account. You can trade options without a margin account, which is one reason why people like to do options. So you could have done a put in this and if you didn't want to do a margin trade, we actually did both. But I want to show you here again, this was day two. Okay, this trade in here was day two. And I just want to show you here, this ended up breaking 63, going all the way down here. It didn't quite get down to 62. It tried, but a really, 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 really big sell off in the PayPal. Okay, and just a great example of not only shorting, but also momentum and how momentum can really come in and just grab hold of a stock and it can either push it up or it can either pull it down. And again, we're talking today about shorting, all right? And the reason I like to short is because you get fast moves in shorts. Any questions here about PayPal as I'm talking? Now, I do have an options newsletter, which I did send out this trade at 921 right before the open. I sent out the $70 strike puts in PayPal. It ended up opening underneath the strike. So you could have actually done a lower strike in PayPal than $70, but this ended up being a really, really huge trade. Why? Because, again, of the cost of the option, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and the fact that it fell off the planet. So it was profitable the first day if you got in, got out. It was profitable here if you got in got out yesterday and it was profitable also you'd still be up if you did this trade actually today because i call this on tuesday in the morning on the 9th and it doesn't expire till friday although i don't know why anybody would still be in this this cost of the paypal was two dollars and 25 cents an advanced trader risk of 40 contracts 
it was nine thousand dollars this is i sold it yesterday yesterday but again you could still be in it i don't even know what this was priced at today but i know this was still a good trade today this probably was worth at least over six still this morning profit was seventeen thousand return on investment 189 percent on the paypal option now if you could have taken one contract of paypal you could have spent 120 i mean 225 dollars you still could have almost doubled your money in the PayPal even with one contract. And again, you can have an options account as a cash account. So if you did a beginner risk, I just have here $1,125, you could have made $2,125. Again, that's in the first day, out the second day. And again, PayPal still could be lower today or tomorrow, but I don't really think it makes a lot of sense for people to hold PayPal, where something's up this much money, well over 100% into the last day of expiration if you are up, okay? So PayPal, again, was the gap of the week. It was the short of the week. It was the option of the week. It was the day trade of the week. It just was a great trade. So, I mean, ultimately, when, you, when you're in something and you really, 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 really love it, you can take it as a day trade, take it as a swing trade, take it as an option. Do multiple options in it. Do multiple day trades in it, okay? And again, that was a short. So I used my day trading strategy, my gap rating strategy, my option strategy to trade PayPal, all right? And it's just one strategy. It's all about the gap. You just do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money trading. Again, you don't have to read tons of books. And you don't have to do tons of different strategies, Tons of people do that and have lots of information, but they just don't know how to make money. The most important thing for you is making money. If you do not know how to make money, you are going to have a hard time having longevity in this business because you're doing this and you're investing your time. And you're sitting down every day and you're opening up a trading account and you're paying for classes and you're spending time in webinars like today all day. You want to spend your time wisely. You want to make money. Otherwise, you may as well just go out and go for a walk in the park. You know, there's plenty of other things to do to enrich our lives if we're not going to be successful. So I try to condense the amount of time that I trade into a very, very short period of time to make the most money that I can in the shortest possible time that I can because I value my time and I feel like my time is very important, just like I'm sure you do. So anyways, getting back to the whole concept of the philosophy of trading and shorting, I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for institutional money in the price patterns and gaps. And if you know how to do this, you don't need to do anything else because this will make you money. Now, I did start talking about this earlier because I said, where do you want to be by the end of this year? I think it's important to write your goals down. I think you, it's important to know where you're headed, not flounder, okay? Not be wishy-washy about your goals. But I think it's important also, like I said, to say to yourself, you want to be in a better place, a better place with your trading, a better place financially in December of 2023 than you are right now in May of 2023. But success in the market is about mastering a skill, and that is how you make large, consistent profits. Large moves happen in the first 30 minutes of each day in gaps, and that is the time of the day that I'm usually getting in. And again, you can't short every gap down. You can't go long every gap up. Just like you can't do gap fills all the time willy-nilly either, okay? I devised a rating system to rate the gaps. I called it the golden gap. And this is the method that I use each morning and I apply to certain stocks that I'm seeing that are gapping or the overall market. And then if I get the rating of 20 points or more using a 26-point rating system, then I will take the trade in the direction of the gap. So my whole system is based on a rating system which looks at charts, okay? I am looking at 26 points on the daily chart of a stock. The rating system is a checklist, okay? This is what you learn in my class if you come and take my class. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. The points predict price direction correctly when a stock is gapping. So again, I'm only doing gaps. I'm mostly doing shorts. I'm mostly getting in right away in the first 30 minutes of the day or I'm not even trading it. And I'm doing options and day trades in both the gaps, okay? Anyways, the points tell you where the money is flowing. So why does this matter? Because you want to know what direction to take the position to profit. The only way you're going to make money going long is if the stock is rallying. The only way you're going to make money shorting is if the stock is falling. It really doesn't make sense any other way. 
So again, you can scalp for tiny, 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 tiny pennies if you want to, if you want to, or you can look at something and you can actually look at it and say, well, let's just go through the whole thing and try to see, you know, if we can get a really big move in something. Because again, if you have a large, large move, you can take one contract and make almost 200% of your money. So the whole idea is to take a good size position, small, medium, or large, whatever you can afford, and make the most bang for your buck and make it as fast as you can. So Golden Gaps have 80% of their move in the first 30 minutes of the day. Now PayPal was an exception to that because it continued actually into the close and the following day the same thing. That was, again, like I said, a very good gap. But I call this the money move, where I'm trying to get in and out very, very quickly. Again, I don't know where Disney's trading right now, but we did that this morning, and we captured probably 80% of the move of that in the morning when we did it and got in and out. We play the day, the move, and the early quick, and we're in and out and done. And then you can have the rest of your day to yourself to do whatever you want to do, whether it's to go into another job, or whether it is to be with your family, or if you're retired, go golfing, or something like that. But... To make money as a trader in this market, you have to get momentum and you have to get the direction right. And you need to be able to be in a position that doesn't need the market to get your move. If you're in something and you need the market's help to get the move there, whether it's up or down, you're going you're gonna to struggle with that, which many people are this year because the market isn't giving right. What do I mean? It's choppy. So it fakes up, then it goes lower. Then it fakes lower, then it goes higher. It's choppy, choppy, choppy. And that has been very frustrating for a lot of people who need trades with the overall market. So again, looking for specific individual stocks is the best thing. Now, this is an overall chart of the SPY. Just taking a look at this here, this is back from March until May. You can see here how we've been sideways. You can see here where we rally and we don't go anywhere up, okay? And then we drop off, then we do it again, then we drop off, then we do it again, then we drop off, okay? So that, this has pretty much been par for the course for the majority of 2023. And again, the Fed has been uh, creating havoc in the market, and the market just waits breathlessly every single time there's an FOMC meeting to see what the Fed's going to say. If you listen to the last Fed meeting, which was last week, I mean, it was as if Jerome Powell didn't even know what he was saying. It was the most convoluted uh, meeting that I ever saw him give where I mean, you kind of just you scratch your head and say, wow, these people are in charge because he, he really didn't have the answers. He didn't have any answers. And he really struggled in that press conference in a way that I have never seen him struggle before. They have no cure for inflation. The only thing that they have that they have an idea to do is to continue to raise interest rates. And since inflation is still too high, I believe that's exactly what they're going to continue doing because I don't know how what to do anything else. And in his speech last week, if you didn't listen to it, you should go find it on YouTube and listen to it. I mean, again, they have no clue what they're doing and no answers to the problems. So the re you know, why people would think all of these problems are going to go away and everything's going to be beautiful in the market and it's just going to scream higher at all, <laughs> not, not just now, at any time in 2023, I mean, I don't know why people think that because the people in charge really don't know what they're doing at this point, which you say, okay, well then what do you want to do? Again, if you're actively trading, you're in and out quickly and you're making money consistently on a daily basis. If you have an IRA or something like that, then you need to sit down with a financial counselor and make some decisions, but you really should have done that 12 months ago or 18 months ago when the market started selling off at the beginning of 2022. But success and large profits come from quality, not quantity in place. One trade, one trade, one trade a day. That's all I can do. Boom. Today we did Disney. Yesterday we did PayPal. One in and out quick. The more plays you have, then the more potential there is for losses. So quality is key. You don't want to lose money. Okay, you want to make money. Now, why do I trade gaps? Why do they work so well? And why do they pay so well? Because gaps, like I said, are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. And again, I prefer to short because short moves, downward moves happen very, very fast and quickly. Panic comes into a stock or the market and the moves happen quick. So I like to be in and out of my trades quick. But you can still make money going long gaps too. But the professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. 
And again, this is what I focus on. So the philosophy behind my 26 point rating system is to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, two, big moves on the day, three, early confirmation of my bias, preferably in the first half hour of the day, and then precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which is what I want. Now here's the month of May. Um, I was off for three days since the beginning of May. We did CVS the third. Again, one trade. Then we did AMD. I like that that day too. That was the third. Peloton, we did the fourth. Spy, we did the fourth. Apple, we did on the fifth. Apple was the one long. That was last Friday. Um, I was off Monday. PayPal, we did on the ninth. We did the Qs that lost yesterday on the 10th. And I did the huge PayPal. And today we did Disney. So May has been off to a very good month. We've only had one loser so far this month in May. And again, these are day trades. These are day trades on margin with an average risk of $2,800 per trade. Now on 5-3, we did CVS. I wanna show you this gap here. This was back last week. Again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So what happened here? CVS closed the night before around 72 and change. Boom, open in the morning. So this is four o'clock, this is 9.30. At 9.30 a.m., CVS opened here around 71 and 30. 30-ish, and then it fell, boom. So we got in, got out, done, shorted it. So this was 5.3, this was a gap, this was a short, down here's the volume. So this was a nice trade. So entry was 70.10, shares of 2,000 with an average risk of 2,800. We did an ad because I really, really liked it. We took more of it when it pushed back, add in, plopped it on, average price was 70.30. We got in, got out, I got out too soon in this. I actually could have held this longer, but again, I prefer to get out of my trades fast. This kept going. I just wanna show you here where this went. This came all the way down and broke 69. So I like to get in and out quick, but you can hold trades if you want to. You really, really can. Then we did the SPY on the fourth, okay? Again, this was last Thursday, a week ago. SPY closed your gap down, fell. Okay, so this was 5-4. We shorted the spot. So you could have done a, bought a put in the spot if you didn't want to do a margin trade, or you could have done it on margin. Entry was 406.30. Shares was 2200. Risk 2860. All of your trades should be the same or equal in risk. If that is not something that you're doing, that's something you should adjust right away. Okay, because your results are going to be all over the place. You'll never know if what you're doing is right. If the amount of money they're risking in each trade varies too much, it's gotta be close to the same in each single trade to compare apples to apples to the trades that you're doing. Exit was 404.15, this was a really good trade. This was $4,730 profit, this was on 5.4. Again, this particular day. Again, in and out, drop. I don't remember why we gapped, I think we had economic data or something. No, no, that was the follow through from the FOMC minutes we had. This was Wednesday, we sold off on FOMC, and then Thursday was the gap down and we fell. That was last week. And again, this is the SPY. Then we did Peloton on that same day. This was a little tiny, tiny one here. Stock close your gap down. Again, some things we do are cheap. This was a cheap one here. I did not do an option in this. We entered at 755 and we made 10 cents on it, $1,200. You could have squeezed a little bit more out of that. I think the low was 730 something. But again, once you get to a certain price point, this is actually like a big move for Peloton. 50 cents, 40 cents is actually like a big move for Peloton at this price point. Does anyone remember when we were talking about COVID when Peloton was all the way up, rallying, rallying, rallying? You couldn't even get a Peloton. You were on back order to even buy one during COVID. The stock has done nothing but tank, actually, in the last three years since then. And like so many other companies, I mean, who knows what will happen to Peloton? Like Bed Bath & Beyond has gone out of business, declared bankruptcy. So many things have been victims since COVID as well. Any questions here so far? Any questions from anyone? Okay. So how do I use my 26 point rating system? I wait for the good ones, which means I'm looking for high odds. So I have a 26 point rating system. I apply, go through in the morning. I spend about an hour every day doing it before the open. I make a list of what I wanna trade and watch in the pre-market. If it rates 20 points or more, then I will take the gap in the direction of the gap. If it doesn't, I don't do it at all. 
show that's it. That's pretty easy. And it's about learning the points, understanding what to look at. And again, that is critical. And that's the meat and potatoes of what I do and what people come and learn in my class. So the whole philosophy behind the Golden Gap points is what? Looking for momentum before the momentum comes in. Because it's too late afterwards, okay? Like if you want to go short PayPal now, you're, you're not going to make anywhere near the amount of money that we made the last two days. The entry in the PayPal was 5.9 or 5.10, okay? I'm not saying that PayPal doesn't fall again. I'm saying the good entry was to capture it right away it's out of the gate on 5.9 and then again 5.10 because, again, it's capturing the momentum, getting the momentum, getting in before the institutions take hold of the stock before they push it down or push it up. How do I quantify risk and options? I don't know what you mean by quantify. I choose amount of risk and I risk the same in every trade as far as cash, cash, if that's what you mean. So if you have an account with $10,000 in it, say for example, in a cash options account, then maybe you want to risk $1,000 a trade. Then you can be in more than one thing at one time. I don't know what you mean by quantify as far as my picks, how I'm making the picks, if that's what you mean. I'm rating the gap the same way that I'm making the trades for the day trades. I'm rate the gap using my Golden Gap 26-point rating system. And if I rate it and it rates good, like we've done trades in the market, for example, then I say I can take this as a put or I can take this as a call because it rates over 20 points and then I do it. So I am doing some things as day trades and options together, like PayPal, uh, or I'm doing some things only as an option or only as a day trade, for example. But the method that I use to make the pick is the rating system for both, if that answers your question. As far as your risk goes, it depends on your cash. And the reason I risk more in options is because I want to hold overnight. But also, many stocks that I've been trading over the last umpteen years were very, very expensive when I started trading options. They, I mean, we were doing Amazons back in the day when Amazon cost, you know, $50, uh, you know, for one contract. Now things have, the stocks have split so much that nothing is at that price point, not even Tesla anymore. But, you know, you might pay $10 for one contract in Tesla, which equates to, what, $1,000 for one. So again, if you, if you want to get nine, you know, contracts, then you're going to spend, if you pay $10 for one, it's going to cost nine grand. So I've allowed myself to risk more because back in the day when I started doing these, I was taking things that were more expensive. Now that's not necessary, you know? And again, they've made options so, so doable for so many people, so many different uh, various price points that they have daily options in the QQQs and the SPY. I'm not doing this. I am not using those, but you could basically day trade options. If I call a short in the SPY, you could buy a put that's the expiration of that day and get in and out. You could. Like the SPY trade that I called in here on the day that we did it, you could have done that. You could have done the SPY expiration option on that day. There's daily expirations now for the QQQs and the SPY. That's something new this year. I'm not doing that, but you could. You could, depending on the size of your account, you could do that. Okay, so there's so many ways to take advantage of it. The system I use for both any method that I trade, any way I take the trade, is based on my Golden Gap rating system. That tells me that the stock's going to fall, and that tells me that, that I want to short it. However, I decide to short it is up to me if it's a put or an equity trade. And then you can, you can decide that yourself. You can decide that yourself as well, how you want to do it. And again, the options and newsletter, like the emails that I send out, that's a subscription service that you can sign up for if you just want to get the options trades and you don't want to learn my method in the class. But I do think learning is important. I do think taking the class is important. It's just a matter of what, what works for you. You know, obviously you're going to do a lot better if you understand what you're doing and you learn first and then trade. But so many people just want to trade. And so I have people in the options newsletter that have never done the class. But I do think they, the people that have done the class trade better than people that don't in my opinion, of the 11 years I've had the business. Now, this was AMD. This was a gap that we did here. This was a short. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Again, that was last week. I called on May 3rd. I called the 82 puts that actually don't even expire till this Friday, but I got in and out. Cost was cheap, $1.50, boom. Dropped, fell, got out. Made a dollar on it, good trade. Made six grand. If you risked a uh, thousand fifty, you could have made seven hundred dollars. Again, this is getting in the trade and out of the trade the same day, but doing it as an option. Okay, we also did a day trade in that too. 
So again, there's many, 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 many opportunities to do day trades and options in the same stock. You just have to look for them. But getting back to what I was saying here, gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. That's an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to train because you're trading on the side of power. You're trading on the side of power. Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who do you think's in charge? The big banks or the small banks? Who do you think's in charge? The Fed or the government? Who do you think's in charge? You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about it, okay? So you know who's in charge. You must play with the people that are in charge. If you try to play against them, you are going to lose. It is a losing, losing proposition. And you have to get on the side of things that are working in your favor. You have to be smart. There's no other way to put it, okay? So the whole philosophy behind the Golden Gap system is to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And then you're using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick, which allows you accuracy in the direction. So again, you must have charts. You can talk to Jeff about the charts. You've got to have charts. Otherwise, you're just trading blind and you're going to lose. You can't make trading decisions in this type of market based on fundamentals. Even if you wanted to do that, you're not Warren Buffett and you don't have billions and billions of dollars to weigh on downturns, buy stocks, and let them drop off a planet before they go back up around again. You won't be able to withstand that. Many, many people can't. Even people that are wealthy don't want to see their, their positions go down to a certain percentage and then take losses and wait for the downturns. And so I caution people for that. This is not long-term investing. This is day trading. This is active chunking and out trading. You're doing it in options where you're active and you're in and out. And we're using the one-minute chart, which allows for good risk rewards and accuracy. Um, this was another good one we did. This was Boeing. Again, this has been falling too. Uh, we did a trade in this. It fell in here. Boom. I'm going to show you the options we did on the fourth. I called. It was just good timing on this for me. Just really good timing. I called it a little bit after the open, the 190 foot puts in BA, and it fell like the second that I sent out the trade, it fell. Cost is 225, which is cheap for BA. Uh, sold at 470. This is in and out in one day, 109%. Again, you can day trade options. Um, but again, you could have held this, but when you're up this kind of money, you cannot mess around. Not in this type of market, not in any type of market, in my opinion. Why would you? When you take a trade, you're, you have to use the money to take it, and you don't have this money back in your account and the profit until you get out. So the nice thing is when you book the profit, say you risk eleven twenty five of $1,225, then the next day you get up in the morning, you've got that money in your account, and you've got that money back in your account. So you don't really want to be holding stuff that long. Anyways, here's the day we did it. That was just, it was just like perfect timing, boom, and then fell off a planet. Now, I didn't necessarily know that it was going to go to 195 that day. I thought it was going to go down that day. It ended up going really, really, really big uh, that day. Here is the BA. That was last week. Anyways, it's important to get a trained eye. This is what I teach in the class. A quality strategy, which is golden gaps. Having how to have a good risk to reward. You got to get the right entry. And without a good strategy, you're never going to make a dime in the market. You're just never going to get there. You need to learn what to do in order to be successful. You need a trading account. Again, you can talk to Jeff about scanners and software and charts and getting all of that. You have to decide if you want a margin account or a cash account for options. That's up to you. You can ask me questions. But it is about focusing on the right information, and you must have a plan for booking money. That's the whole purpose of doing this. It's fun when you make money. It is not fun when you lose. And if you're losing money trading, then you should stop what you're doing because it doesn't work. You know, a lot of people want to blame themselves and say, oh, I have a discipline problem, I have this, I have that. Chances are the strategy you're using just doesn't work. If you don't have a good strategy, you're just not going to be successful. So anyways, we talked about working from home, getting the right risk to reward, and we did touch on this earlier about today's economy and really, you know, making decisions to be independent. And basically work for yourself. Then you really are in charge of what you want to do. And I do think it's important to focus on success, have goals, set those goals, and empower yourself to trade. Any questions here? I'm just watching my time a little bit here. I'm going to talk about the class and the class dates. So I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Rating System. And I teach my class once a month. It's a checklist. 
And again, I teach this class because I think it's important for people to know what to do. Now, I call the trades live, like the Disney trade in the live trading room. You can go to my YouTube and watch some videos of the room on there and other videos I've done. If you take the class, you are eligible to join the live room. In the class, you will learn a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. It's a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. And the class for May is May 20 to 21st. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. It's 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99. If you're interested, email me. I'm currently running a special. I already had this going on. Um, if you're interested in the combo, it's $74.99. You get the trends and the golden gap. And the special is if you sign up by tomorrow, you get the trading room free through the end of 2024. That's the rest of this year, 2023, and all of next year. This is huge. This allows you. It's an earnings season special. I've been running all week, and I'm running it through tomorrow. If you want to sign up for this, you must email me for the sign-up forms. It's a good offer. This means you don't have to rush to rush to make the money back for the class. You can take your time in the room, take small size, follow along, learn, and train, and, and it's a good offer. Any questions here last minute? Uh, you might have saw it already, but there was a question about how you quantify risk in an options trade. Yeah, I, and I, I, don't know I, you, I didn't know what you, the person I, meant by that. Uh, Maybe you can explain what they meant. What did they mean? I, I don't know what I, quantify risk. I, I don't know if I was, um, I, the only way I could say it, the way I would quantify a risk in an options trade is if I was buying something, my maximum risk is going to be what I paid for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I that's that, paid it for it, right? Yeah, in the worst case scenario. Thinking. I don't know if that's what he's asking. I, so. don't, I didn't know what, I didn't understand that question because if you're, if whatever amount you're risking, you can't, you have to look at the size of your cash in your account and all your trades risk should be close to equal. That's how I quantify it. Other than that, how I'm choosing the trade, if the person meant that, is based on my rating system. Other than those two explanations, I'm not sure how to answer that question or what that person meant. Perfect. Well, I thought you did a great job. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, Jeff. It was nice to see you and I will see you soon. All right. For sure. Uh,